Well, good evening, church family. Welcome back to our Wednesday evening prayer and devotional time. Glad to have you here. We're going to be in Psalm 98 today. So if you have your Bibles with you, go ahead and make your way there. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a psalm that just sings joy to the Lord. That's the theme of this song. And uh, this is an expression that we see multiple times throughout the uh, the psalms themselves. The, it begins with the, the words, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. And we actually see this expression, I believe, six times throughout the psalms. And you know, I've spoken at other times about uh, why that may be. And my, my feeling on this, and this is um, you know just a personal take, is that as David wrote these, you know, he was writing a song that described the God that he knew. But as is so true in our own lives, and I imagine it was true in David's, uh, as the days go on, God continues to reveal more and more of himself. And before too long, the songs that perfectly described our understanding of God yesterday don't quite fit the bill for how marvelous God has become uh, to us today. And so it's my, my thought that as he says, uh, sing to the Lord a new song, you know, it's not an idea that the old songs are bad uh, by any means. What he's saying is that as we grow in Christ, as we, uh, as we know God more and more each day, uh, he, he sort of changes. He becomes bigger every day to us. And of course, we know he's still the same, but we know him better. We understand him better. Uh, and we, we see more and more of his glory. And so... Uh, we should continue to express uh, his glory in new ways, and so we should sing to him a new song. And so that's what the, the heartbeat of this song is all about, um, and it's a, it's a beautiful one. So let's take a look and see Psalm 98. Uh, let's see what the scripture has to say for us today. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and those who dwell in it. The, let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. Would you join me as we ask the Lord to just bless our time here. We ask the Holy Spirit to go before us. And uh, give us, of course, wisdom. And uh, just bless the, the reading, the hearing, the teaching, and the application of his word. Would you join me? Heavenly Father, as we always do, we give you thanks. We give you glory for your word. We thank you for these scriptures and the way that they reveal your glory to us. And uh, Lord, as we uh, reflect on this text, uh, Lord, I pray that you would just put it in our hearts. Uh, the, the words to say, the, uh, the thoughts to have. Give us a new song, Lord, that we may sing uh, about you, that we may sing it to you. And uh, Lord, we know that you are continually giving us things to sing about. And I pray, uh, Lord, that you would loosen our lips here at this time. Lord, that you would uh, free us up to give you glory. Help us to uh, to be bold in our praise for you because you are worthy to be praised. Uh, Lord, we just pray again as, as we go through this time, as we always ask, uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be our interpreter. Uh, reveal to us tonight what you would have us to know about you. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So as I mentioned, um, you know, the psalm talks about singing a new song and giving God glory. That really is our purpose. That really should be the thing that we always ask ourselves. You know, how am I glorifying the Lord today? And so as we look at this, uh, you know, singing a new song, he goes on to talk about precisely what he means in this. Uh, it says, his right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Now, this, I think, is phenomenal, especially at this time of year. You know, of course, we are, uh, we are, are coming into the time of year in which we rejoice over the coming of the Savior, the birth of Jesus. And when we look at this, we see what, dis what makes our faith distinct from other faiths around the world. See, in, in the Christian faith, it is God who has done the entire work of salvation. 
other religions are sort of transactional and they, they have this belief that if we behave in a certain way or we do certain things, then we shall receive certain favor uh, from you know, their particular uh, God or deity. But, but in our case, God has done everything. We simply have to receive it. That's all we have to do. We just open our arms and receive what Christ has already done. We add nothing more to the equation. And we see this here. Put so eloquently, his right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. He has worked salvation out. He has provided salvation. And that's really what this season is all about. It is the arrival of that answer. The arrival uh, of, of the instrument of our salvation. The person uh, of Jesus Christ who, uh, of course, went to the cross and, and, and uh, was raised again. He, he paid the atonement for our sins. He did all of the work for us. So that all we had to do was receive what he has done. goes on to say, The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Another beautiful, beautiful passage to remind us. Uh, sometimes we kind of get caught up in our bubbles and we uh, sort of forget that Christ came for all people. You know, it's easy for us to sort of isolate ourselves by, you know, geographical region or, or by, you know, country or nation or people group or anything of that nature and, and sort of think that, you know, this is our God. But Jesus Christ came for all people. He has made his salvation known among all the nations. You see, he doesn't deserve just the glory of, uh, you know, the, of North America or in our case, you know, Washington or Stillicum. Uh, he deserves the glory of the entire world. Every uh, knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All of uh, this world will give him the glory that he is due. And he has paid this price for all. See, the, the, the beauty of salvation is that it's not exclusive to just one group of people. His love is expanded to all. And is made known to all. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. If you remember, those were, were very uh, specific words that we heard uh, last week. His steadfast love and faithfulness. We, again, we see those echoed here. All the, the, the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Again, God's love has been made known to the ends of the earth. And here we see uh, this imperative, right? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Again, not just part of it, all the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Now, you know, this is one where, you know, you can't, we don't have to worry about getting too far down in the weeds as to the specific types of instruments listed here. And, you know, he's basically saying whatever you've got, use it for his glory, right? You know, if you're uh, a singer, you've got that going for you. If, you know, you're a player of stringed instruments, you've got that going for you. If you're a player of brass instruments, whatever you have, come together in this just full, almost orchestral uh, uh, song of praise. The, the world coming together, all the different uh, gifts and talents and languages and, and everything that we have all coming together in this one beautiful song to the Lord. And it even goes further if we continue on. It's not just the people that glorify God. It's nature itself that glorifies God. Because, see, He is God over all creation, not just the you know created beings. He is Lord over all created things as well. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and those who dwell in it. So we see, and we've talked before about how the sea was kind of that unknown uh, realm, but we see basically everything above the sea, you know, those that dwell in it uh, should be giving God glory. Everything below, uh, you know, the surface of the sea, everything in that unknown realm is giving glory to God. They're joining in on this heavenly chorus. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together. Again, you, you know, you're, you're seeing uh, some illustrative language here. This isn't actually expecting, uh, you know, rivers to, to start clapping and, and hills to start singing, but we do see, you know, these things. When, when nature makes uh, its, its noise, when it does what it does, right, the, the blowing of the wind and, and 
uh, all the beauty that we see in the world around us, it's all pointing back to God and it's all singing his praise in its own special, unique language. All of creation points back to God. All of creation is for the purpose of glorifying God. And that's one of the beautiful things about the universe that we live in, right? We, you know, no matter how small we go, you know, we can look through, you know, bigger and better microscopes and, and we get further and further, further and down into uh, the weeds in what makes us up. And we think that if we go smaller and smaller and smaller, we're going to eventually get to the end of things. But every time we get to, you know, what we thought was the end of the line, we find something even smaller, right? We find that there's something more complex going on there, something more intricate that God has made. And we find the exact same if we go outward. You know, we have these telescopes that can just see forever, just about. And, you know, we get to the end of what is known and we think, wow, this is an amazing universe that God has created. And about the time we get to the edge of it, we create a bigger telescope and we realize we don't even know the half of it. All of this is out here to give God glory. Every single bit of it is to point back to how truly big our God is. And not only is he, you know, big and grand and can make the, the grand expanse of creation, but he is also a God of details down to the smallest uh, cellular, you know, you know, even smaller than that, uh, you know, level that we can even imagine. He is a God of fine details. He knows every intricate part about you and me. But at the same time, he is also the God that has cast every single star into place and knows them by name. That is how truly uh, deep and wide, if you will, uh, you know, our Lord is. And, and just, it's a phenomenal thought to have. And all of this, big or small, was created to give him glory, to sing to him a new song, whether it's in, in word or in, you know, in visual or whatever it is, you know, even just the changing of the leaves uh, just draws us to that mindset of, wow, you know, you look at all the beautiful colors and you think, what could have done this? And it all points back to God. So let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He is righteous. He is, uh, he is right to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. So there's this promise that he will come and he will uh, establish his kingdom, as we've spoken of before. He will judge the peoples. But he has made, we go back to what we saw earlier in this passage, he has made his salvation known. There is none uh, that is, you know, that, that can have an excuse for not knowing what God has done. There are none uh, that uh, can claim ignorance in any way, shape, or form. God has made his salvation known. And not only that, it's not simply saying, well, these are the steps you have to take to be saved. God has done the work of our salvation. We have to but receive it. That's all we have to do. And that is what we celebrate at this time of year. We celebrate the coming of Messiah. The coming of Jesus being born to live among us, Emmanuel, God with us, to remind us that he has come to do the work that we could not. We tried in vain for so very long to be righteous by the law, to uh, live according to God's perfect standard, to in some way, shape, or form earn our salvation, and we failed over and over and over again. So Jesus came and paid it all. Jesus did everything. All we have to do is receive. And we take the blessings of what he has done for us, and we sing him a new song. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks again tonight. As we reflect on everything that you have done, Lord, I pray that you would put a song on our lips. Uh, Lord, whether it be a, uh, a song of, uh, you know, one that we've, we've heard or, or something new, Lord, let us uh, continually sing of your blessings. Let us continually sing of your goodness, of your, your mercy and your grace. And uh, Lord, we help us to remember, uh, Lord, that you are not simply uh, worthy of praise because of what you have done. You are worthy of praise because of who you are. You certainly do continue to bless us, but Lord, if you uh, chose to stop today and do no more, Lord, we know that you won't do that, but if that was your decision, Lord, you are still worthy of praise. There is still not a created thing that does not sing 
out to you, Lord, that does not point back to you and give you glory. And so, uh, Lord, where the, the the hills and the mountains and the and the rivers and the seas, where they all cry out to you and give you glory, let us not be stubborn. Let us not be silent. We who have the opportunity to know you personally, to know you intimately, uh, Lord, in a way that uh, the, the inanimate objects of the world do not, but yet they still give you glory. They still cry out your praises. Uh, Lord, help us to do better than that because we receive your blessings day in and day out. And uh, Lord, that, that puts uh, a song in our hearts and it put, should put words in our, our, our lips, Lord, to, to send back to you uh, songs of thanks, songs of praise. And as we come into this time of year, uh, Lord, help us to always remember Lord, the greatest blessing that we ever received, the gift in Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, help us to remember the price that was paid uh, for, for our sins. And uh, Lord, help us to remember that where we failed over and over, Lord, you, you went the entire way. Lord, and made it so that all we had to do was believe and receive. And uh, Lord, we do that. We are reminded of that. And Lord, we give you glory. Help us every day to point back to you in all we say and do. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, again, church family, as always, I love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And I'll see you next week.